um, uh, give you an opportunity to uh, get a quick update on things as the uh, summer has continued to sort of uh, evolve with our team and as we flow into July and recruiting starts to take shape, you know, usually we really focus on a lot of team stuff. So, you know, having the opportunity to do um, a couple workouts a week as a group for the first time is a little refreshing. Um, you get a little bit more anxious. You wish you had a little bit more time with them because um, you get your juices flowing a little bit once you start to see the, you know, possibilities and whatnot of all these different guys. But I've uh, been really, really proud of the group um, all the way since getting here. Um, very, very impressive uh, group workers. And um, adding our new guys, the three young guys over the last three weeks, you know, they have fit in seamlessly as people. And, um, you know, just really encouraged by their approach. So um, I'll probably just open it up to you guys a little bit here and uh, answer as much as I can, get you guys as much, you know, information as you, as you need to, because probably within about three weeks, these guys will depart. And, and uh, we'll break for a uh, quick break before fall semester starts. You mentioned the new guys integrating seamlessly as people. As players, what's the biggest challenge for a, a freshman coming into the first summer of being a college player? Well, I think every freshman has an adjustment with the pace and the speed and the size of everything that's going around. I mean, most of the time, their biggest adjustment is young players learning how to defend in college against older, bigger, stronger, faster guys. They're no longer, so to speak, the elite talents that they were in high school where physically they can just dominate people. That's the, the norm. Um, these guys haven't really missed a beat. Uh, they're a mature group, uh, smart, uh, where they're supposed to be, when they're supposed to be there. Uh, in three weeks' time, they've all made significant progress on, on their bodies and their conditioning. And just watching them move yesterday with the other guys and watching them sort of get into the flow uh, feel all of them belong here. Feel all of them have a real chance to be successful. So, uh, but the learning curve is big. The one that's, you know, I guess a unique thing for them is usually freshmen are coming into a situation where there are seniors and juniors and sophomores that have been there and done that, and they're not learning, and they're the only guys that stand out in terms of making more mistakes. Uh, in this case, everyone's sort of at ground zero, so they have a little advantage in, in that regard. Jawan talked about the need for, for veteran leadership. I think Robert said, you know, it's just like having a coach on the floor or whatever. How important is it that you get that from this group? Well, it's really important. Um, I think that the upperclassmen have established that they have a good way about them in terms of their communication, leading by example. But we need a group that have a loud voice. And you know, Rob's a guy that's going to have to step out of his comfort zone a little bit. He's done a better job this summer than he did in the early spring. Um, he's really, really worked hard and shown people, you know, how it's done, but he's talking more. Colin's a huge boost. You know, he and Juwan both have been uh, fantastic in every regard of what we're doing in terms of them communicating, uh, talking, and, you know, you got to have a team, you know, that can communicate with one another. And there's got to be a sounding board, and I think those older guys know that. What is the uh, latest with Colin? What is Colin able to do where he at just in terms of being back? Uh, Colin on a Monday or Sunday night in his last checkup was actually cleared for contact. So, you know, as we approach sort of these team workouts, we'll be very, very smart with him. There's no real reason to speed him up. But I think confidence-wise, mentally, physically, he feels as good as he's felt in a long, long time. We'll continue to take him slow, but he's, a, he's ahead of schedule just in terms of where he's supposed to be. Doing what he's going to do and the way that he's handled things this off season, he's given himself a chance to kick off, um, you know, October, November, full go. Well, you're putting your stamp on the program. How key is it that you have those upperclassmen setting that tone and everybody getting in lot of stuff behind you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very important that we're we're uh, you know, that we're very driven right now to put a stamp on things to get um, an identity started, and uh, I think from small groups to individual sessions, they. They've got a feel for that. They understand sort of what, what we do. Now from a team perspective, um, you know, we're sort of reteaching everything. You're know, reteaching the way you practice. You're reteaching the way you communicate and practice. There's, everything's new. So you have to take some time with that. But those guys who have been there, um, they have to pick it up quicker. And then they have to help teach the other guys who aren't getting there as fast. But um, the identity is going to start and stop with the guys they pick things up the fastest and execute what we're asking them to execute. The purpose of this summer 
in particular this next three weeks, is going to be to put in place a foundation of how we practice, what we do in practice, and starting to build a foundation on offense and defense. So, you know, making sure those guys, uh, especially the upper class guys, the seniors who have been there, you know, they're out in front. And uh, not that anyone can't catch them, but uh, they're out in front. Archie, the ability to be in sync with Cliff in terms of what he's doing, strength conditioning, and what you're practicing, how, how close do you guys have to, to work so that if, if you go hard, say, one day in practice, then maybe you adjust what he does and vice versa? Yeah, that relationship is uh, probably more important than most realize. You know, uh, Cliff and I obviously get a game plan each phase of the year. You know, the calendar year requires different things. This is a big time for him. Um, he's had a great off season with some guys, and he's also had a great um, he's also had a great way about him of getting great results through his his way of doing it. But his communication on a weekly basis, uh, his communication on guys mentally, physically, how do they feel, um, really dictates how I operate with them at some times. And as the course of the season goes, as we're in the fall and we start to get closer to practices, you know that's when you really got to be smart with guys. And Tim Garl. Um, Tim, Cliff, and myself, that's, a, that's sort of a three-headed monster that operates very, very closely. Coach, you mentioned just how important this offseason is for Deron Davis. Just at, at this point, how would you evaluate the progress that he's made? Excellent. Before? Excellent progress. Uh, he's done a great job in the classroom. Um, he's done a great job um, in terms of when we first started, we have to get a couple things done before we can start talking about basketball. And that was, you know, conditioning in his body and um, he's done a fantastic job there. You know, he's lost close to 20 pounds. Um, he's moving and jumping as good as he ever has. He has a great confidence about him. I think he feels good about himself. Um, he still has another gear I think he can reach, which is good as he approaches these next three weeks and then he goes home. Um, but he's right where he should be in terms of what we've asked him to do. And I think he's gained confidence because he's worked very hard. Coach, where are you with uh, non-conference schedules at almost done? And, and how do you feel about it? It's been, uh, uh, amongst everything, scheduling is obviously very difficult. And inheriting uh, sort of a really blank slate and getting a late start at it has taken some time for us to build it with some of the things that we need to have happen here in terms of games played in Assembly Hall and whatnot. But we're coming down the home stretch here. I feel like we can get some things buttoned up within the next couple of weeks. Um, when you look at the non-conference schedule and some of the things that are out there, whether it's uh, Seton Hall on the road or Duke at home, Louisville's already out there on the road, and then Notre Dame neutral. Two Big Ten games coming in the first weekend of December. When you look at the early stretch, we're really going to be taxed. You know, about a three or four week period, not only going to be jamming games away, but we're not going to be at home as well. So it's going to be very, very taxing in terms of getting through, you know, November and early December. It'll be as many games played at a high level uh, for us in that period of time, maybe upwards of five to six to seven games that are played against, you know, either top 10, 15, or top 25 teams. So we're going to know where we are sort of heading into December, and then we've got to jam some more in. And uh, games being played at home and, and games being played on the road, it's been a tough balance. But I think when it's done, uh, it will be a tough non-conference schedule for us. Will it be glamorous? Probably not. I'm not sure we could pull glamorous off right now. But um, in future schedules, years down the line it'll be easier to build around and we're also as most people know as a league you know contemplating 20 big 10 games which changes the whole format so scheduling something that's uh, evolving it's changing by the day and it could get tweaked a little bit more as the big 10 kind of looks to maybe make a tweak in the uh, conference slate which you put 20 big 10 games in there a big 10 challenge a gavit game indianapolis you know i don't know how many more you can actually schedule you know at that point so um, but it's been uh, it's been good. I think we'll get it done here in the next couple of weeks. Are you, do you, will you handle the, I guess, coaches have talked about not knowing what they're going to do with that week off that suddenly everybody's got yeah. in March. Do you have maybe an idea for what you want to do with that open slate? You know, I think there's been a lot of things that have been thrown out, whether you play like a, uh, save one of your exhibition games and play somebody so you stay sharp or save a non-conference game at that point in time. And, you know, there's so much risk as you're heading into postseason play that I think that you know, the Missouri Valley's done it here for a while and I think the Wichita States of the world take that week off and they sharpen themselves up and improve and try to get as fresh and as healthy as you can. I don't think that's all bad either. So I think as we look at it for the first time here, uh, you know, that week in between or whatnot, we'll use it as a time to regroup, refresh, and hopefully get a little bit better with some time at a time of the year where you don't get much. George. 
our key, um, when we first laid the eyes on these kids when they first came in, just talk about what changes you've seen up to that point. Are you talking about the incoming freshmen yeah, or all of them? All the kids that you saw. Um, there goes from great uncertainty to, um, in a very quick way, if you're doing things the right way, put them at ease. And then I think as they get a chance to work with you and they get a chance to watch what you've talked about, sort of lay out for them, I think there's great excitement. And with great excitement and opportunity for some of these guys, there's an added sort of bounce to their step. I think we have a group that feels good about themselves right now. I think we have a team that believes there's enough in the room that can do things regardless of what people say because I think they like one another right now. They've had a very good off season and typically very consistent off seasons should start you off in a good way. We have a lot of room to go though. I mean, you know, when you start talking about practice, and I haven't probably ran a practice like yesterday since maybe my first year at Dayton, you know, when you're actually trying to teach them the name of a drill. You know, those type of things haven't been done in a while. So we're, we're all at the beginning stages. But I think this is a group that can handle things. They're very coachable. I know it's a bit of an anomaly, but what's your own thought about having those first two Big Ten games in early December? Um, it hurts you in terms of your ability to navigate a non-conference schedule. But in terms of knocking two Big Ten games out in three days, as long as everybody's doing it in the whole league, it's fair. And I think it'll add great excitement early in December to a couple really big environment games, one at home and one on the road, um, that really you know, can get you kick-started into that month of December as you get ready to open it up in January. So you know, when I was in the ACC, they had always played a game in early December. In all of all the games you play in November and December, that one had a whole different feel. So I think you have some games there early in December that have a whole new meaning, regardless of who you played before or what you'll do right after. So there's a real importance early in December to be ready. Those two count. And uh, I think it'll be a good statement for the league at that time, too. I think it'll be showcase basketball for our conference in, in early <coughs> December. Last question. Coach, can you talk, I know it's early, but can you talk about the state of leadership right now in the team? Coach, you just in here speaking about how they lacked that last year, all last year. Very good. Um, I think it really starts with the older guys, um, not the single guys out, but I think if you look at a fifth-year kid like Colin, you look at Rob's experience level, you watch Jawan in going into his third year, uh, not to single anybody out, but those three guys have been fantastic with their voices. And some guys lead by example. We have other guys sort of fighting their own fight to, to be – uh, better players and all that, but I think leading by example, talking, uh, we have a good group in that way. And, uh, you know, just everything that we've done, I mean, those guys have responded and, and tried to do it. Now, we haven't gotten punched in the face or any of, no one's gotten in the game or getting yanked out of the game yet, so that's how it has to go. But I feel like a couple of these guys feel this is their last go, and they're going to give it everything they have. And I think Colin being really a guy who's really spearheaded and is good. He's like an assistant. He's like having a coach, regardless of in your weight room or where you're at. I mean, I think he's contagious and uh, really, really fortunate to have his voice around right now. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you guys.